Hello, and welcome to What Your Family Needs to Know About Ataxia, an awareness program about ataxia featuring our own resident here in Peters Township, Ed Schwartz. My name's Tony Sulkowski, and I am here with Ed Schwartz today, who is a 35-year resident of Peters Township. Ed has a rare degenerative cerebellar disorder called ataxia for which no known cure exists at the present. More specifically, ataxia is incoordination of movement that is not the result of muscle weakness. It is actually caused by a portion of the cerebellum or a dysfunction in the inner ear or even a dysfunction in the spinal column. In this session, the first of a three-part series, we're going to look at Ed's 20-year experiences where he was trying to find out exactly what was causing his many seemingly unrelated symptoms. So today, Ed is here to help us to understand ataxia better and to share information about an upcoming fundraiser for the Ataxia Foundation here in Peters Township in the month of May. Ed, thank you so much for you, being Tony. here to share your journey down this road called ataxia. And here's my first question for okay. you today. What is your expectation for this program series that we're presenting here? I want to make sure that there are as many people as I can that know what a taxi is. It took me a long time to find it out myself. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, 20 yeah. years. And uh, I, want, I want people to understand uh, just exactly what the condition is, how serious it is, and how difficult it is to understand and interpret it. Part of the problem is that the medical community doesn't always understand it as well. And so if I can share the things that occurred to me, then maybe the general public can understand. If they start having these things occur to them, maybe they have a taxi too. And they have to raise their hand and say, hey, I may have it, I need help. So a three-pronged approach here, understanding the condition of ataxia, appreciating what this all means, and getting the medical community on board yes. with everything. Mm -hmm. So knowing your overall goal then with this uh, condition called ataxia, can you kind of take us back in time and tell us what the first indications were that oh, yeah. you were having a problem? Oh yeah, this has been over 20 years ago that this started, but it's just like it was yesterday. Uh, the first thing that started happening is I started having uh, jerks uncontrollably when I'd sleep in bed at night. And I wouldn't wake up, but my wife said every, 20, every 10 seconds, rhythmically, my whole body would jerk. And you didn't realize that. I didn't realize it, and I didn't wake up, but she did. <laughs> she knew it was happening. Mm -hmm. And the, the second thing is when I started noticing it, when I would get up to go to the bathroom in the night, I would fall down in the dark. So I, you weren't tripping over anything? No, I wasn't tripping. It was just the fact that I had a problem somewhere in my head in the dark, and I'd fall. I'd just wow. I'd go down, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the third thing that, that happened that really was unusual, I thought, I'd be driving the car, and just the vibration of the car would cause my eyes to vibrate like they were trying to refocus. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't read the uh, speed limit signs. And so that was the third thing. So and those are three unrelated, absolutely. seemingly unrelated. Seemingly, yes. That were happening to you mm -hmm. a little bit over time, and but together. Together, okay. in, in the same time frame. And yes. did you have any other symptoms after that? Oh yeah, starting then and working up to the present, I've had a number of symptoms. Uh, first of all, the uh, jerking motion turned into a restless leg condition where my leg would kick spontaneously like that mm -hmm. in a day or at night as well. Uh, I had periods where I, my blood pressure was high and then there were periods where my blood pressure was low. Uh, I experienced ED very early on. And then I started having obstructive sleep apnea. This is where I would stop breathing 
and hold my breath for extended periods. Oh, and my. there's a concern, you'll stop breathing totally. Right. Uh, so uh, I had that. Uh, I started experiencing unusual uh, gastrointestinal feelings, real nervous tension, like, and I couldn't sit, I couldn't watch TV, I couldn't read, I couldn't work at the computer. Mm -hmm. Dumb stuff, you know. And you go to the doctor, the doctor just kind of a cross-eyed <laughs> at you, or he might try to treat one thing at a time, or two things at a mm -hmm. time, but never together as a as one system. So didn't see it as one big picture. Never saw it as one big picture. Oops, something's wrong here. Oops, something's wrong no. over here. And this, this is the point I was wanting to get across to the public. If they start experiencing any one of these symptoms in association with one of the other ones, regardless of the sequence, mm -hmm. they may have the same thing happening and they need to go get help. Yes. Oh my. And then uh, what about with uh, what was happening to your extremities? Did anything happen there after a while? Well, yeah, and this turned out to be the, the biggest thing of all, and that is, and it's continuing today, I cannot walk well at all. I, I hesitate, I, I have to grasp mm -hmm. for balance, and in my case, something that many of the other people that have a taxi have, that I have, is that the gyro function in both of my ears has been destroyed. So that once I start to fall, I can't correct. I go, mm. I go clear down. Most of the people with a taxi can take a step and kind of go caught sideways mm -hmm. and come back, but I can't. So you fall, have you ever fallen backward? Oh yeah, I, my greatest tendency is to fall forward to the right or straight backward. And I bumped my head more than once. You go down hard and oh, you hit your head yes. on the floor and it right. bounces. And that's not good either. That's not good either, huh? And uh, you mentioned earlier a little bit about your speech. And how has that impacted your speech? Well, I think that the listening audience can hear me slur my words a little bit. And this is something that I'm just in the very early stages of this. and from other people that have a taxi that I've been around, they will get to the point that you can hardly understand what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And along with that goes, I uh, kind of swallow around the corner of my mouth now, and I'm starting to lean my head this way. That's known as dystonia. And I don't know what causes it, and I have to work very, very hard to keep my head erect, uh, even while we're talking here today. It's something that's new that's just happened mm -hmm. in the last uh, maybe six months. So this is, sounds like it progresses over time yes. and different things uh, pop up or emanate as uh, you go through your life and things change. And I would imagine um, you were kind of frustrated with doctors diagnosing one thing or another. You must have had a breakthrough in this diagnosis <laughs> at one point to lead you to knowing that you have ataxia. Very unusual, very unusual. My brother is a doctor, and I went to him, and I would say, this is happening to me. And I don't think he believed me part of the time. But it just so happened that he was at a medical conference and met another fellow, and they were talking, and they were talking about particularly this GI distress, which kept me up and really was goofing, goofing with my head while I was goofing with my GI. And when they, my brother explained it to this guy, this say, guy said, I know what's wrong with Ed. Have him call me. Hmm. And so I called him. He's in Cincinnati. He says, yeah. He says, I know what's wrong with you. We need to put you on a gluten-free, wheat-free, dairy-free, egg-free diet. He didn't say what I had. He just said, I know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. I went on that diet. And within two weeks, that restless leg situation really abated. And my GI distress really abated. And for the first time in literally months, I was able to lay down and go to sleep at night because prior to that, I had been walking the floor for up to two hours just in total distress because I couldn't sit down, I couldn't stand up, I was just going in circles. 
And it got to the point where my wife, trying to explain it to the doctor, mm -hmm. would take pictures of me on the phone because I'd lay down on the floor and I'd be laying on the floor kicking or having spasms. It's, and it's goofy. And those were all involuntary. They were all involuntary, yes. So you get this doctor in Cincinnati who starts to treat the symptoms um, through a diet approach. And uh, then what led you to, and you didn't have a diagnosis at that point. No, so I didn't. So what was the next step in your personal journey in this process? Okay. My wife and I were reaching out continually trying to find something. And we saw an advertisement for a conference in Philadelphia called the Brain Conference. And not knowing anything else to do, we went to the conference. And we were walking around the exhibition hall, and there was a little booth there with a sign that says, National Ataxia Foundation. So we went up to it, started talking to the volunteers, and all of a sudden I had a revelation. It was like I was talking to myself in the mirror, mm -hmm. because I found out the volunteers couldn't stand up either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the volunteers were talking with a slur in their language. It was very distinctive. And I said, I bet you I have a tax here. And that was the second real clue to us. Wow. Yeah. So now you're uh, treating symptoms through diet. You find people who are like you and share similar dysfunctions. Yes. So I would imagine now you've got to prove what this is. So you're yeah. back to the medical community, right? So I came back to Peter's and we started through a procedure trying to find a doctor here that could relate to what I was doing. I finally found a uh, neurologist who ran an MRI of my head and my neck. And when he came back, he says, Ed, uh, you're experiencing a shrinkage in your cerebellum. And he says, that's what's causing your problem, and you have a tax here. And there we were, see? 20 years later, Wow. That's in our memory, that was mm -hmm. the first time that we'd ever had anybody say, a tax here, cerebellum, in the same sentence, and that's your problem. So you had an actual physical diagnosis. Had a physical diagnosis, Which yeah. had to relieve you somewhat. Oh, I was excited. Okay. Yeah. Right. It so was exhilarating. To get a name for this. Yes. And to know it was a condition. Even, even though it wasn't any better. <laughs> <laughs> no. So now that you had this diagnosis, um, you're going to have to start, I would imagine, advocating for yourself. Yes. Because this, doesn't, this is such, so rare that all the doctors don't really know much about it. Right. Okay, so how did you uh, advocate for yourself? Well, it was at that point that I decided I was going to take, have to take a greater control of what was happening. And I decided to take kind of a holistic approach and get help from any place that I could get. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, we started looking for, uh, for other people. I immediately started going on this diet even though my general practitioner didn't approve or agree, I went on the diet from the guy in Cincinnati. Uh, I started taking physical therapy because the guy that gave me the MRI said, you need physical therapy. Mm -hmm. And then I started on a, a process to educate myself. And did you find any resources uh, out there that you could recommend to people that you thought were really, really good? The uh, the biggest resource that I ran into was the National Ataxia Foundation and their uh, website. Okay. And they have a tremendous number of educational materials on there. Good. And so we'll probably be posting that on the screen here so okay. if people are interested, they'll be able to see that. Did you find anything from the government? Did they have any uh, materials that were helpful? Well. After I started taking uh, physical therapy, the young lady who was handling that recommended to me the uh, gov, let's see, I'm oh, trying to think PubMed. of it. PubMed. Mm -hmm. PubMed. PubMed.gov. It had a number of technical articles on there. And as I started preparing for this particular uh, show, I went back and pulled together my 
mm -hmm. uh, articles. I could pile medical articles just about this thick. Every time I read them, I learn something new because as I get more knowledgeable about this, I can key into stuff that passed me by the first time around. It's so, amazing. So what kind of uh, pathway of treatment are you following now at this point in time? Well, I'm following, following the same thing that uh, we talked about, the uh, gluten-free mm -hmm. diet. And we'll talk a bit more about gluten-free later on, not today, but in our next session. Uh, eat an awful lot of vegetables, mm. a lot of vegetables. Uh, and I, I started wearing a weighted vest mm -hmm. that you can see here that's designed to counteract my tendency to fall. Oh my. Uh, so I do that. It's I like a counterbalance thing, right? Counterbalance, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, that's that's basically it. Okay. Yeah. And um, are you still taking physical therapy at this time? Yes, I'm taking physical therapy two times a week. And I've also added a, uh, a supplement program to my diet in addition to just the food. There are a number of vitamins, I'll call them vitamins for lack of a better term, that they say are good for you. There's ones that you've, you've heard of fish oil. Right. And right. you've heard of uh, CoQ10. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be good for your brain. I don't know where they are or not, but a number of people say they are. And at this point, where there's no cure and no other direction, mm -hmm. there's nothing for me to lose. Right to do that, so I'm doing that. Okay, uh, and then do you have other medicines that the doctors well, prescribed? There are, yeah, I've got one carryover from my restless leg, and I've got a couple that I'm taking to try to help me sleep, because mm -hmm. my sleep is very bad. Um, and that's about it. Okay, yeah. so at the beginning of the show, we mentioned that ataxia is very rare. And the National Ataxia Foundation says that about 150,000 people in the United yes. States are actually diagnosed with this. Yes. And um, others will argue that the registration is poor and that the number may even be higher than they real, realize. But um, what about from uh, your viewpoint of it being rare? What have you noticed in, in this area? Well, the one. Uh, the one thing, oh, you mean in, in, Western this, Pennsylvania. in Western Pennsylvania? Well, I've been involved with a support group here, which started out with another lady and myself. She would just start it all by herself. And when we first started meeting, we had about three or four people. And in the past year, I've talked with three additional people. So we've doubled the number we had, but mm -hmm. the other three don't participate with us. And one of the things I've noticed as I talk with all the people, there's a reticence to talk about it. There's a um, kind of an embarrassment mm -hmm. that people don't want to admit they have it. A person that should be using a cane doesn't want to use a cane. Uh, my wife will tell you that I know that I should be using my walker all the time, but I'll take off through the house trying to prove that I can still walk. Mm -hmm. But that's dangerous because if I fall, yeah, it could lead and to I other break problems. Bone. That's even worse yet. Wow. So, and see, one of the supplements I, or some of the supplements I take, are supposed to help keep your bones strong. Mm -hmm. So I, in anticipation that I might fall, try to keep the bones strong that. ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So, you joined this National Ataxia yes, Foundation. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a little bit about the goals for that and how it helps people like yourself? Yeah, their, their overriding goal is to make life comfortable for people with ataxia. And they, they engender these support groups like I'm involved in. They work very, very hard at trying to provide educational materials for anybody that's interested to do that. And they also provide research trying to find a cure for ataxia. And in the past three years, they've spent about a million dollars a year, which isn't really very much. Probably compared to a lot of these no, other uh, medical-related organizations. That's right. You, you take the American Cancer Society with pink in the whole world. Right. There's no pink that, nobody, that anybody knows about. <laughs> with exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but uh, they've just hired a, uh, a director of development 
who's going to be charged with trying to raise more money. Mm -hmm. And in the last, I don't know, three or four years, they have just about doubled the number of deans that they have found, which they think are contributing to a lot of the attacks here that's occurring. So they've doubled that from 20 to 40. Just through just research. a very short period of time by the research they're doing. Yeah, it's very rewarding to see that. So you mentioned that one of your personal goals is to try to raise awareness about ataxia. And that's going to be happening here shortly, right oh, here yeah. in Peters Township. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit more about this fundraiser? It sounds like it's going to be a really neat deal yeah. here. This will, this will be the first of four fundraisers we're going to have this year. We're going to have a musical concert at the Trinity United Methodist Church, which is just up over the hill from the high school here. And we'll be having uh, three uh, musical sources. First of all, the Hobb Sisters. Yeah. Uh, Peters Township girls are trying to get into the Nashville scene. They're mm -hmm. going to be there. Cross Vision, which is a another Peters Township group who does religious music, is going to be there. And then I've talked our own minister into coming. Uh, he plays the keyboard like this, you know. He's kind of a Liberace <laughs> kind of guy. I don't think he dresses he, like Liberace. No, 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 no. <laughs> he doesn't dress like him, but he plays like him, and he writes some of his own music, mm -hmm. and he can play contemporary or he can play uh, religious music as well. So the three of them are going to be on a concert on May 22nd, uh, starting at 7 o'clock for two hours, and uh, admission is free. There would just be a free will offering. And these people have donated all their time. And one of the interesting things about this community is I have this dumb condition, and people have just swarmed to help me. They c contacted me and said, we'd like to put on a concert for you to help you raise money to That's support awesome. the taxi. That's awesome. So on really May 22nd at 7 o'clock, yes. Trinity United Methodist Church, mm -hmm. you're going to have the Hobbs Sisters, yes. who are uh, country music. You're going to have Cross Vision, a uh, Christian probably rock group, and uh, Pastor Mark Stewart. That's correct. He's going to be playing the keyboards here playing on the piano. Playing the keyboard, yes. Okay, so Come that, out. that sounds like a great <laughs> thing. Are there tickets being sold for this, head? No, or? no tickets whatsoever. You just appear and be there at 7 o'clock. And we'll take a, the free will offering. Is that how we'll raise our money? Okay. Yeah. And that's the one, as you said, of four uh, fundraisers that go to directly to the Ataxia Foundation. Yes. 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 And uh, that address is going to is listed on here on the show. They're going to show that at www.ataxia.org. If you want to know a little bit more about Ataxia. Ed is willing to talk with you directly. His email address will also be posted, but for right now, I'll tell you that it is eds, that's E-D-S, at ataxia.org, and you can get in contact with him, and he can also get you in contact with members of the local support group of Ataxia. And even better news is the following month, in June, you're going to be at Community Day? We'll be at Community Day and hope it doesn't rain this year. I'm still wet from last year. <laughs> <laughs> it was a soaker. Yeah, it right. was. It was. And you'll ha are you going to have a tent? and? Yes, um, we'll have a tent set up and members of our local support group will be there. So it'll be not only myself, but other people that have a taxia. Okay. And so if you want to learn about a taxia, come on out. Great. Yes. And then this, of course, is just a preliminary show. Uh, Ed is going to share a little bit more of information about Ataxia and probably two, at least two more subsequent shows. So those of you who are watching this can find out more about Ataxia and Ed's journey through that. And I want to thank Ed for being so oh. willing to share with everybody here in the general community about ataxia. It's very helpful. I know I've learned a lot um, just by meeting with mm. you and talking with you, and you've certainly enlightened me. And I'm sure that people who are viewing this show would like to take advantage of the opportunity to support 
the Ataxia Foundation by attending that concert at Trinity Methodist Church on May 22nd and also by stopping at the booth on June 25th at Peters Township's Community Day. So thank you all so much for watching this segment of what every family needs to know about Ataxia. And we hope that you'll stay tuned to your favorite cable TV show here locally in Peters Township to learn a little bit more as Ed Schwartz discusses Ataxia and the impacts on the lives of those who contract this condition and how debilitating it can be, but what the potential can be to get through it. So again, thank you very much, Ed. And I want to thank you and I want to thank Channel 7 for doing this because quite frankly, it is very difficult to find any public uh, opportunity to talk about it. The newspapers are not interested. The other mainstream TV channels aren't. And I've worked very, very hard to get to this point with this presentation, and I'm thrilled to death for the opportunity. Well, great. It Thank was you. a pleasure meeting with you today, and I look forward to our future segments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.